Okay kids, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to put a new handle on the mill. I'm going to convert this janky handle to a Bridgeport speed handle. This is a Natong milling machine. It is not a Bridgeport, and Bridgeport parts do not fit this. The first thing I need to do is get this handle off to see what I'm in for. I know this is going to be a big project. That's why it's taken me so long to decide to do it. Now, in order to put an actual Bridgeport handle on, it does not have these splines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and see what I'm in for. The other thing, too, with this is the clock spring is broken, so the quill just falls down and the way it's supposed to work is the quill should be if it's not locked it should be just held at neutral it shouldn't spring up like a drill press and it shouldn't fall down so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to figure out how to tear this apart this thing is held on with a keyway and it's kind of galled on so I just use brute force nothing surprising here it is a little dirty. I'll clean it up. I use the same process to remove the clock spring housing. Okay, well, there you have it. There's not a clock spring in here. So someone had this apart, and if you look here, can you guys see that little nub? That little nub right there, that's for the clock spring. Let's see here. There's a little nub right here. That's for the clock spring. Let's go to my favorite place, Amazon, and take some measurements of this and see if we can find something that is... I head off to Amazon and I buy a clock spring housing for a J-head bridge port. I buy a pinion hub that matches the clock spring. Next, I buy a quill handle that matches the pinion hub. At the very least, I know these three parts will work together. Out of all of these parts, the critical one is the clock spring housing. Once I get that to fit, everything else will fall in place. After taking some measurements, I determined that the clock spring housing is smaller on the new one than the old one. I'm okay with that. The new clock spring housing is deeper than the old one. I'm not okay with that. I think that's going to cause some problems. Well, we knew it would fit in. We knew this was going to be loose. See how it's loose? And then here, this is the furthest it'll go in. I'm going to head to the lathe to cut this down. It's going to be tricky. Remember, there's a spring in there. I don't have much to remove, but I take my time. I can't have that spring fly out and go everywhere. I'd be screwed. I can't believe this is actually working. So next, what I need to do is make a sleeve to fit this into. Because I believe I showed you guys there was a bunch of slop. So what we have is on the housing, or this, this outside diameter is 2.162. This outside diameter is 2.040. So we need to make a sleeve with an outside diameter of that, inside diameter of that. Right? Two, two, one, zero. There you go. That's the difference. All right? So I need a sleeve that is 0.122 thick. 
I have this chunk of aluminum that I got off of a transfer pump that was a dumpster find. This will work out good. I got to remove around 7 eighths of an inch from the outside diameter. Sit back and watch the chips fly. All right, this is looking good. Now we got to bore out the center. See that? That's a nice fit. I was afraid to use my parting tool on this because it was so thin, so I used a hacksaw. That is a tight fit. All right, let's go over to the mill. we want we don't want it to turn like that okay good well this piece mates with that so we knew it was gonna fit uh, so now what we have to do is I'm hoping and I know you guys can't see because I don't have my flashlight here I'm hoping now I can get that clock spring on that little tit. So I was messing with it and obviously I didn't film it. And I'm not so sure you guys can see inside here, but on the spring right there, you see that oval hole? 
So that overhaul. <laughs> we're going to say it goes from front to back. Now that pin that's in the mill is ovaled this direction. So think, we ha I believe everything's lining up, it's just a pin on the mill is too big for the hole. So I don't know how in the world I'm gonna egg this out. I have no idea. I tried using my little Dremel tool. This spring is just laughing at it. All right, guys, I had to get out the big dog die grinder to get through that spring. And I'm sorry I didn't show you, but it is working. Ow, hit my head on this light. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it is hooked in. And I'm, I went around about half a turn. This is very difficult by myself. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if my lovely wife is home and I'm going to have her give me a hand. So what I have to do here is loosen the set screw, put a pin in one of those holes, and proceed to wind the clock spring. I think I need to turn it about one and a half turns. Then I have to tighten that set screw again. This is kind of difficult to do yourself. So I have Kathy come and help me. All right, guys, that seemed to have worked. I kind of lost track how many times I went around. The other thing that I realized was, if you guys can see this keyway, and you see that keyway, see the difference? This keyway is smaller, and it has to be keyed onto the shaft, because the key has to go this way. That key is what turns the quill. I have to make a keyway cutter. I have a separate video on how I did this. I'm just going to highlight this process. First, I grind a cutter from a broken end mill. Next, I drill a hole in a piece of rod to accept the cutter. This is just normal steel, nothing fancy. Next, I have to turn the rod down to a half inch so it'll fit in my drill. Next, I have to turn down the old pinion so it'll match the new clock spring. I have to put the mill back together because I need to use the mill to cut the keyway. Now that the old quill is back on the mill, I can use the mill to broach the keyway. This is an easy process, but it is a little time consuming. What you do is you move the quill up and down, make a few strokes, then you move the table in a couple thousands, you do the same thing, or you move the table left and right and you do the same thing. This homemade key cutter worked great. This thing fits like a glove. We are in the home stretch here. This thing's going to work. We got one last thing we have to do. We have to trim the shaft. That's right. The shaft is too long. I grab my angle grinder and I have at it. This is a little scary. Point of no return. Okay, let's see how I did. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I might have pulled it off. One final thing I have to do is I have to make a bushing that will go between the shaft and the pinion. Remember, they were two different diameters. I'm going to 3D print this. Time to get this thing assembled for the last time. Okay, I'm sure the purists are not going to like that 3D printed uh, collar, but that's okay. I have 
this just adjusted in. That has to be enough just so this doesn't come out. Uh, so you can see the quill's moving and you just move it a lot just like that or you can go around the horn. The clock spring price still needs wound a little tighter but there we go. I'm going to call that a success. That's perfect. It's a lot better than this thing. This thing would just fall down, get in the way where now I have this. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.